Hey there, and welcome to Breakfast with Mark Daniels for Friday, January 31st, 2020. Long Island Super Bowl weekend weather. Actually, not too bad. Today, tomorrow, and Sunday looks like we'll be in the mid-40s by day. Nighttime lows in the low to mid-30s. We could do 50 degrees or even better on Monday. No mention of any rain or snow this weekend into early next week. Recapping from yesterday. First, the password predicament. How do we manage the hundreds of usernames and passwords that we have to remember on a daily basis? Jerry advised me to write down my username and passwords and put them in a safe spot. He stores his in his phone. Lizbeth said that she keeps an old-fashioned phone book with her usernames and passwords inside. She's also started using Touch ID more. She never uses the Remember My Login and Password feature. She's afraid that it might get compromised. I don't blame you. Jen said that there's a little thing in your iPhone that will help store your passwords. Easy. Done. And who knew? Lisa said that she puts all her passwords in her notes on her phone. The only problem with this is if her phone dies or if something happens to it, it's gone. She's also taken screenshots of the notes just in case. And several others have suggested that you download a password app. It takes and stores your passwords and user IDs. And every time you go on a website, it loads them instantly. Who knew? Chris works in IT. He said writing down your username and password is the worst thing you can do because somebody could see it or steal it. He suggested password apps like 1Password and LastPass. He says they work great. And now to embarrassing moments. Jerry's embarrassing moment was making a class presentation for the very first time. I think each and every one of us can remember that moment. And Lorraine said hers was very similar to mine. They were riding the San Francisco trolley, and she had to buy tickets, one for herself, one for her seven-year-old, and one for her four-year-old. When her four-year-old said, Mom, I'm five years old. Did you forget? She said she was mortified at the moment, but everybody on the trolley did have a great laugh out of it. And finally, the answer to yesterday's Throwback Thursday question. It was about Phil Collins, drummer for the band Genesis, and a successful solo artist as well. And it was his birthday yesterday, too. The question was, what did Phil Collins win his only Oscar for? The answer was, he won it for Best Original Song, You'll Be In My Heart, from the Disney film Tarzan. Some things going on this weekend include the Ward Melville Heritage Organization's Chinese New Year's celebration. It's going on this Sunday, and it's happening in Stony Brook Village. All kinds of festivities, including that nine-foot lion dance, kung fu demonstrations, taiko drumming, dancing, singing, children's crafts, and a lot more. You can get details at stonybrookvillage.com. It's also Groundhog Day on Super Bowl Sunday. That's when that little furry rat or groundhog comes out of his burrow and helps us predict the weather for the next couple of weeks. The nationally known groundhog, Punxsutawney Phil, he's like the Taylor Swift of groundhogs. Well, he's helped put Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania on the map. Each year, people gather by the hundreds to watch this creature come out of its hole. And, well, if it sees its shadow, that means six more weeks of winter. If he doesn't see his shadow, then it'll be an early spring. I don't know what his success rate is, but if you ask me, it's a little iffy. We have our own Long Island groundhogs here as well. Probably best known is Malvern Mel, also Holtzville Hal, and a new one on my radar this year, Quags Quigley. Quigley. Sounds like a very distinguished kind of groundhog, wouldn't you say? I'm sure your kids would love to see the groundhog come out of its little hole and help meteorologists all over the country predict the weather for the next six weeks. So, if you're interested, you could find all the details on lots of groundhog happenings at Newsday.com. Just search Groundhog Day. And who could forget the movie Groundhog Day, starring Bill Murray in 1993? He's a TV weatherman who, during an assignment covering an annual Groundhog Day event, is caught in some sort of a time loop repeatedly reliving the same day. Excuse me, where's everybody going? To Gobbler's Knob. It's Groundhog Day. It's still just once a year, isn't it? Apparently not for him. It might be a good movie to rent with the kids this weekend. And now on to the Super Bowl. It's Super Bowl number 54. I always wondered why they used Roman numerals to depict what number Super Bowl it was. I mean, after all, I've forgotten a lot of my Roman numerals that I learned in school. 
Anyway, the Roman numerals, according to the NFL, were adopted to clarify any confusion that might occur because the Super Bowl is played in the year following the chronologically recorded season. Okay, it's the San Francisco 49ers and Kansas City Chiefs. The game is Sunday night at 6.30 Eastern Time at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, and the game will be broadcast on Fox. And here's a little throwback for you. The very first Super Bowl didn't even sell out. The tickets were priced at $12 a piece. It's the only time a Super Bowl game did not fill a stadium. Today's Super Bowl tickets are going anywhere from $5,000 to $20,000 per seat, and it will sell out. And commercials are averaging $5.5 million for every 30 seconds of commercial. And advertisers know you'll be watching every commercial because the best and brightest spots that air during the Super Bowl are probably the best commercials of the entire year. The commercials are as exciting and interesting as the game, usually, anyway. Listen, I'll be the first to admit to you that I'm a fair weather fan and that I'm not really a fan of either of these two teams. What I am a fan of is the Super Bowl itself. Seeing the two best teams duke it out for winner takes all. That gets me excited. And I start planning hours before the thing actually starts. I set up my little surround sound system, making sure the speakers are just in the right spot. I get the dip and chip trays out, ready to make all those fabulous hors d'oeuvres and snacks. I have my favorite chair positioned perfectly. And I have a shopping list of all the things we need to buy to make our Super Bowl party the best. And to me, I'm really excited. My wife and daughter go along with it because they know how much I like it. I don't go out over the top and buy all those Super Bowl plates, tablecloths, cups, and napkins. Now, paper towels and paper plates from BJ's are fine with me. And of the 1.3 billion chicken wings that will be consumed on Super Bowl Sunday, in the Daniels house will probably consume a couple of dozen at least, I'm going to be ordering my chicken wings out. I have to admit, I have not been too thrilled with the way things taste coming out of the air fryer. I hate to admit it, but it's true. Some other food statistics that I found interesting. There'll be 8 million pounds of guacamole consumed on Super Bowl Sunday, 14,500 tons of different types of chips, and about 325 million gallons of beer will be consumed on Super Sunday. Now, these snacks ranked in order. Pigs, number one. Chili, number two. Those wings, number three. All that guac, four. And Mexican dip came in at number five. By the way, my wife makes a mean Mexican dip. Hope she makes it this time. And the game has 72 footballs on hand ready to use during the game. And that's the average number of balls they use per Super Bowl. Aside from the snacks, the commercials, and the game itself, I am really looking forward to the halftime show featuring J-Lo and Shakira. That is going to be one hot halftime show. The kind of halftime show where you hope it never ends. Demi Lovato will be singing the national anthem. And finally, 17 million of us will take off Monday using either a vacation day, calling out, or not showing up at all. In any case, that's something I don't really have to worry about. And for future reference, I'd like to know what snacks you served at your Super Bowl gathering, whether it was a big party or just you and the family getting together, just so I can be prepared and maybe try new things next year. You can comment on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And finally today... I hate to bring it up now, but the way my head works is better early than late. Right after the Super Bowl, we know what hits. Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's a little early or maybe a lot early in your head, but the Valentine's decorations in places like Walgreens, CVS, Stop and Shop, wherever you do your shopping, they showed up right about after Christmas. And what's interesting to note is that I haven't heard much talk about Valentine's Day anywhere lately. But it is a day to start thinking about how you're going to celebrate. My wife and I would, well, before kids anyway, we'd go out for Valentine's Day in one of those very crowded, very popular restaurants. We've been mostly celebrating very simply at home, just the two of us. Maybe I'd make a nice, interesting dinner or she would make a nice, interesting dinner. But now that the kids are mostly moving out of the house, we may go back to that restaurant scene. 
and the conversation will probably start this weekend. So, what would you like for Valentine's Day? When I ask that question, I always get, well, anything you give me would be perfect. Come on, give me a hint. Send me on a path. Point me in a direction. I'm a guy. I need direction. But I really want to do something that's going to make her happy. And after being married for over 20 years, you know, bottom line is, I think that most guys feel a little bit pressured. And I know we shouldn't feel pressured because a gift is a gift. A gift means something from the heart. And whatever it is that you give and you can afford is something special. But still, I have to admit, I'm a little nervous. So I googled what women really want for Valentine's Day. From Esquire.com, satin pajamas. All right. A weighted blanket. Those are really in. But a blanket? Happy Valentine's Day? A rent-the-runway gift card ensures that she won't have to buy anything. She'll just have to rent something. Mm, probably not. A sweater. A cheese sampler. An ultimate beauty sleep collection. <laughs> I don't know what that is. A matcha kit. Am I saying it right? Matcha? M-A-T-C-H-A? Something to do with caffeine drinking. A supersonic hair dryer. Now that says I love you. And a beauty box subscription. I'd well, be careful with that. Hand wash, an Apple watch, way too much. Lip stain, ah, now we're talking, a truffle gift box. I know she likes good truffles. And the list goes on and on. Now, I'm not sure if I'm totally accurate with this, but uh, again, I think that guys feel the pressure and women don't feel the pressure as much. Or maybe they're just a lot more creative at finding the perfect gift for the guy in their life. In any case, I'd like you to tell me what you want most for Valentine's Day so we can all... Be prepared together. And so you could help me out. <laughs> Please feel free to comment on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Steve Harvey, he has a take on Valentine's Day. He appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Courtesy of ABC, here's his Valentine's Day advice. Here's a secret oh, okay. to Valentine's Day. I'm open to this. I want to hear it. Listen to me, fellas. Yeah. Whatever you do, flowers, candy, it has to be done with a public display of affection. If you send the flowers to the job, it's got to be in front of a bunch of women. If you send candy in front of a bunch of women, if you go down to the job, speak to all the women first. Let them know you there. Then go pick your girl up. You get more points when you do it in front of people. Totally right. It's just, it's and that'll do it for this episode and this week for Breakfast with Mark Daniels. Thank you for listening. Breakfast with Mark Daniels is available on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, Apple iTunes Podcasts, Alexa, YouTube, and buzzsprout.com. Just search Breakfast with Mark Daniels. Please like and share keeps us growing. And if you're interested in advertising with us, please do send me an email, breakfastwithmarkdaniels at gmail.com, and we'll set you up. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Enjoy Super Bowl Sunday and Groundhog Day Sunday. We'll see you back here Monday morning for Breakfast with Mark Daniels.